Can we go play in your time machine again, please? I got something I want to show you. It's my family's old cave. Don't you want to see it? Let's go check it out. Yeah, it's dusty and the doors busted off, but actually it was always busted off. That's the way it came. They didn't have doors back then. Can you believe it? The floor's covered in squirrel turds and prickly little baby tumbleweeds, but it's a pretty solid house if you just get used to it. And you might as well get cozy because we're going to be here for a few nights. Pick your bed. There's a one over there, the stack of 16 woolly mammoth furs all piled up on top of each other. Boneless, of course. Yeah, who wants to sleep on a bony woolly mammoth fur? Want some nuggets? They're over there underneath the pile of rocks. The rocks keep them cold and, you know, keeps the critters from snagging them. Hands off my nuggets, you dirty rascals. Find your own. Not my leg. That's not a nugget. And plus, it's all bone now, you dummy. You've already ate all the muscles last week. Anyway, I would probably take that mammoth fur bed. That's definitely the best one. That's the one that everyone usually likes. Or you could sleep on the fresh horse or whatever that thing is over there. It's dead. It's clean, but it's warm and it's um, pretty soft. I'm not even sure what it is, though, but we're going to turn it into a proper bed soon. Or there's a pile of grass and twigs and hairballs with the squirrel sitting in it. Did you see that squirrel in there? What's he doing there? Anyway, don't mind him. He just sits in there and turns his head back and forth. Just pretend like he's not there, even though he sometimes stares at you while you're asleep. His buck teeth popping out, jaw kind of rocking back and forth, eyes round and plush and full like two giant tangerines about to fall off the tree. That's why my brother stopped sleeping there. Gets all freaked out. I, me too. I get freaked out. I think he's nasty. But Mr. Wrinklestill, that's his name, and get this, he picked that name out himself. Said he found it in a book somewhere, thought it sounded all badass. So that's his English name. His squirrel name is really hard to say. You gotta do a little thing with your teeth. I can't do it. Maybe you can, but I can't. Anyway, Mr. Wrinkle still helps out a lot around the cave. He sweeps. Takes him forever, but he sweeps and he scares away the lizards, except for his girlfriend, Lizzie Dizzy. It's obviously his girlfriend, but he says it's not, but we all know it is, and he gets all mad and butthurt whenever we tell him that, but I don't even know what they're doing, though. There's this crack in the wall, and they squeeze into it, that little hole in the cave that I think it leads to, like, a big old tunnel, and I mean, I can't see inside there. It's really small, and then they disappear in there for hours, you know? You can hear them laughing in there, and sometimes there's this weird, like, boom, boom, dippity, sound god i'm the one who has to listen to it well and one side of the tunnel is now all gummed up all blocked off which is good because no more bugs are coming through but instead this green sap kind of stuff keeps leaking out it's kind of greenish brownish i'm thinking is this cave made out of rock like they told us it is or is it made out of a tree or something the sappy old tree and where's all this green sappy gooey stuff coming from anyway if it's not a tree what even is it it didn't used to be here i tasted it you know just in case and it was actually pretty good it tastes kind of like that soup that stew that thick stew that the squirrel makes sometimes the one he cooks for us and i he thinks it's so funny whenever we eat it and it's super good so we're like okay whatever you can laugh you know more for us i don't even know why he thinks it's so funny Anyway, now I'm worried that one day this cave is just going to pop open like a shooken up bottle of Surge or Mountain Dew or something, and we're all going to get soaked and sticky and nasty and have nowhere to stay, nowhere clean at least. Anyway, it's your first day here. I should probably be saying more positive things about this ancient abode. I should make this place sound better than it is. And I mean, honestly, it's not that great, but uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, you're here, so we're here. We might as well make the best of it. And now you definitely probably don't want to sleep in that bed, the one with the squirrel popping out of it. Then um, I guess your last choice is that slab of rock. We got like three of those, a bunch of them. You know, they came built in. So you can take whichever one you want. Okay, so now imagine you're in this cave, or a much better cave, hopefully, not this nasty one that I've painted for you. 
Where would you place your bed? Where would you feel most comfortable and safe? Although now in modern times we have fancy houses and apartments and we are millions of miles away from the dangers and beauties of nature, deep inside our brain, the animal in there, that vulnerable, scared animal inside of there trying to survive, still thinks it's in a cave. And so in order to get the best sleep, we need to position our beds and arrange our bedrooms accordingly. That's what I recently figured out and what I want to talk about today. This is episode number 14, Move Your Bed for Better Sleep, 10 Quick and Easy Paths to the Land of Z's. Today, I'm going to give you a handful of tips on how you can try placing or positioning your bed in order to sleep better. I stumbled upon all of this myself by sort of random coincidence. I finally bought a proper desk and chair. Not that you need to know this, but sort of a little backstory to me moving my bed. Before, for this past year, I have been sitting on a little box, an actual box. And my desk was the size of one of those ones you have in elementary school, except without the cool cubby thing where you can put things inside. What was up with those things anyway? You couldn't even close the thing where you, people could see all your stuff. No privacy for kids, apparently. All the cool erasers and pencils and papers for the world to see, you know, if you duck down and peek at it. Oh, or those other desks, the ones where you could lift up the top like it was some kind of exotic sports car. Those were fun. Anyway, this past year, I didn't have a desk anywhere nearly as cool as either of those. So I finally gave myself some love and bought a daddy size chair and an adult size desk. This thing is like a Millennium Falcon sitting in this giant cockpit, blasting through the universe, mostly through the internet galaxy and word processor constellation and and places like that. Got a boom for my mic now too. I'm locked and loaded, ready to go to get some real work done. But since my room is so tiny, I had to play a little game of Tetris. That's actually part of why I didn't buy a real desk before. I didn't think there was space, but there is. We're going to make it fit. The main Tetris piece that I had to flip around was my bed or my futon. After setting up my desk, putting it in place, I had to move my bed. And all I really had to do, it was much easier than I had imagined, All I had to do was flip it 90 degrees, just turn it a little bit over here, and I didn't think anything of it. I was too focused on my cool, badass sci-fi desk, but then I went to sleep, and I felt amazing the next day, way more than usual, and my Fitbit data confirmed it. My REM sleep and deep sleep were both off the charts. I never really saw this kind of thing before, and then it happened again and again, night after night. I was sleeping much, much better. I I could feel it even just as I sank into bed each night and it felt so much more cozy and comfortable. It brought me back to some weird baby childlike place. I felt safe and more at peace. Like I was, you know, a child snuggled up in my mother's arms. She protecting me from all the, the scary monsters and bad guys out there. That got me curious. I started to put the pieces together and think, "Mm, maybe this moving my bed has something to do with this. But at the same time, I thought, no way can this little 90 degree flip, a half a pop shove it, work so much magic. The whole process of moving the bed only took me like 10 seconds, you know, because I got a futon, I sleep on the floor. So don't go thinking I'm Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, just flipping beds around like skateboards. So I meditated on the whole thing. I tried to figure it out, and that led me to learning more about feng shui. Ooh, feng shui. Oh my god, your room is so feng shui. Let's have some tea. It's green tea. My grandma bought it from Japan on her little trip. She went there over the weekend. It's like super good, and it's good for you too. Yeah, that's me. I'm a feng shui expert little guy now. According to this Chinese philosophy or whatever, there are certain ways you can arrange your room to let the energy flow more naturally and peacefully. Cute, right? I think I might go buy a fluffy little puppy now too. Maybe get some 
eyelid surgery for it, you know, so his eyes are more popping. And maybe I might become a lesbian just thinking about it. I might as well, right? Because I got the feng shui thing going on now. I got the, oh God, I am just asking to get canceled. This is like what everyone's trying not to do. Don't get canceled. Don't get canceled. Don't say things like that, you know? And now, you know, the feng shui people are coming at me now, the lesbians and the puppies. Puppies are going to come biting and I'm scared of dogs. I didn't tell you that. Uh, anyway, come and get me, guys. I'm just joking. We all need to laugh and relax and open up if we're ever going to heal as a culture and as people. And why can't a man become a lesbian anyway? That's discrimination. That's not even fair. I just want to try it out, you know? Everyone else is doing it. Anyway, feng shui or not, common sense tells us that you want to feel safe when you're asleep. Well, when you're awake too, but especially when you're asleep because you're so vulnerable, unconscious, laying there, eyes closed, body sometimes completely paralyzed, or if it's not, it might as well be. You're just, uh, you're just there. A fresh, ready, prepared, tasty meal just waiting to be eaten by all the creatures lurking out there wanting you. I think it's because we're so spoiled nowadays living in the mansions and castles on the hills, even just tiny little apartments tucked away in some suburb away from the forest full of devilish beasts down below. We no longer live in a cave. We no longer live with the other animals out there in the wild. But if you did, everything I'm going to say today would be completely duh, obvious, no brainer stuff. What are you doing? You're trying to get yourself killed? Why are you putting your bed over there? Idiot. Anyway, imagine you're in that cave. Would you sleep with a top of your head at the cave opening with your back turned to the wild wild outdoors all the tigers and snakes and big hairy shirtless ancient muscle men running around sneaking around behind you screaming and tossing things and whacking you and stuff like that no that's idiotic as animals ourselves in order to feel safe we don't want anything dangerous behind us why well All of the useful parts of our bodies that can protect us, our weapons and sensors and all of that good stuff are forward facing, are in front of us in the front part of our bodies. We don't have eyes on the back of our head. Even our ears are pointed forward, especially mine. Mine are really pointed forward and out there, you know. Our nose is in front of us. We kick and we punch in the forward direction. Yeah, you can elbow the monster behind you or do a backwards headbutt or something like that. However, if you can't even see the enemy, you'll be way too slow to even be able to use such tactics. You're already a zombie burp, zombie bait, Eden, and you're going to become a ghost wandering around invisible through the lonely world. And every time you think you're about to make a friend they scream and run away and turn on the lights and call the ghostbusters and you don't want that you're not going to be able to fall asleep unless psychologically and biologically you feel safe that you're away from the dangers and predators or that you can at least detect them and protect yourself if they do come before playing tetris with my room which isn't my favorite game but i had to play it my futon bed was in the absolute worst position, I just realized. And I only now realize it and decided to share it with you and make this episode because it was such a dramatic shift in my sleep. And in case somehow you were just as oblivious or naive as I was. So from this experience, I discovered 10 little tips on how to sleep better, 10 problems that I was doing, 10 things I was doing wrong. And What we can do instead, simple things like moving your bed around and just shifting things this way or that, actual bedroom design stuff, things we could do to sleep better. Okay, so here are my 10 tips. Tip number one or problem number one, there was a window behind me. Sure, I'm up in the sky in a building. We start stacking things up in the sky these days, right? You know, what kind of cave is that? I don't want that one. Give me a real one. But this is what we got, you know, especially in the big cities. So I logically know that no one, except maybe Spider-Man or his friend or something, unless he is going to get into my window, why would he want to come in here? I don't know, but I guess I'm pretty cool if he wants to come. And even if he did, I could probably take him. You know, he's like super skinny. 
Isn't he supposed to be a superhero? Anyway, I know I'm safe up here, but through that window, through that thin glass, easily breakable window on the other side of it is a wild mess. The outside world full of enemies trying to attack and aliens trying to invade. I can hear ambulances, motorcycles, and airplanes, the modern day evolved technological version equivalents of tigers, wolves, and anacondas. Plus, there is this ghetto heater air conditioner thing in my room, and it was right there hovering above my left shoulder, roaring and screaming and turning on throughout the night. Also, the glass window and the curtains cannot protect me, at least not psychologically, from those monsters out there, and plus a dumb beast spitting out hot air. I was sleeping in such a vulnerable position, letting them scramble around behind my head. No wonder I couldn't sleep as well as I would have liked to. I was secretly worried they would claw me from behind, and that dumb air conditioner, I can't stop talking about it, I want to send that guy home to the junkyard where he belongs. Brave little toaster can play with him and save him if he wants to. I'm not going to. I don't want it. But, you know, it's winter. What do you do? They can hang out together. Anyway, he keeps me warm with his loud, fiery breath. Thank you. But that's no way to sleep. And definitely not with him up there, just right above my left shoulder. I can't even get him if you wanted to get me. For one, that vicious heater monster is behind me and second he is to my left i'm right-handed a lot of us are right-handed that's my strong hand it's my good hand i can't punch him with my left i could but like you know he's totally gonna beat me i'm i'm done you know i'm heater meat what so tip number one don't put your bed up against the window with all the madness of the outside world scrambling around behind you Don't put your head up against that window. And tip number two, keep all the scary, dangerous things, the noises and the openings closer to your dominant hand. If you're right-handed like I am, you might feel better with the loud noises if they're there. Hopefully they're not, but they are in this modern industrialized world. Keep those loud noises and things to your right, coming from the right side of your body. So you can punch them or stab them If they get too close, protect yourself from that stuff. Now my bed is positioned such that the window is to my right, not behind me, or to my left, where I can't really do anything about it. And that dumb ghetto blaster, very punchable, super punchable air conditioner is also to my right. I'm not going to hurt him. He's good. He was actually here first way before I got here. So he's like probably way older than me too, you know? So... I should, like, respect the guy, right? You know, he's just doing his job anyway, so I don't know what I'm complaining about. Super noisy, though. And tip number three, and this comes straight from feng shui. Oh, my God, feng shui. They call this the command position. Move your bed to a place where you can see the door, even if just in your periphery, probably in your periphery. I was already able to see my door before because my room is so small, I can see everything. Well, I guess I could technically flip my bed around and have my back to the door. Then I wouldn't be able to see it and that would be a terrible idea. A vulnerable, it would look weird too, and would put me in a vulnerable, hellish little land where I would not be able to sleep, at least not sleep very well. That's vulnerable. The door to your back, the cave wall open, for all the things to come in and get you in the middle of the night and you're just trying to relax and recover? Come on, guys. Give me a break. What if some monster pummels through that door or sneaks in through the keyhole? I mean, monsters can do that, right? They could do, they could sneak it through keyholes. They could sneak underneath like a little air and then re-solidify afterwards. I don't know. That's what my brain tells me. And then what? You're going to be like, where am I? Everything's all red and hot and wet and your new bed is in the belly of the beast. Yes, we can lock our doors and we should lock our doors for obvious reasons. And if you're not already doing that, that also will probably almost definitely help you sleep better. But even cognitively knowing that the door is locked, our body feels like it's just a flimsy palm tree branch or something draped over the cave opening anything can get in and you want to be able to see it 
so that you can prepare, you can run away, hide, or fight in time before it's too late. What a creepy, crappy way to die. Something is sneaking up on you in your sleep, and you don't even see it coming. A real life nightmare. Hell on earth. Don't put your body in nightmare mode. Keep your door in your line of vision. Don't go sleeping huddled up next to it. Nothing like that. Keep your distance. Give yourself a head start just in case something scary does come in. And like I was saying before, you do not want the back of your head up against any openings to your cave. Nowadays, in our modern fancy houses, we have multiple openings. Not just a door, but multiple doors sometimes, and also windows. So we're somewhat screwed in this sense. But try to put your bed in a place where you can see as many of these entries, these portals to the outside world, as possible, and detect any invaders trying to come through. You don't have to actually like keep your eyes open and try to detect these guys, but your body needs to be in a state where it feels like it could if it had to. That's the point. You probably have one main entry uh, door, most likely, that is the most vulnerable spot in your castle, your sort of weak point. So keep an extra eye on that one entry, that one door in particular. In my case, it's there to my left. It's my door just there in the periphery off to my side. My ears and eyes will certainly be able to detect any invaders if they come shooting through. And my body knows that and can therefore sleep more soundly. If your room is so massive that it's just not possible to see the door, lucky you. If your palace is too luxurious and large, then the feng shui folks say you could get a mirror maybe or perhaps a series of mirrors to bounce that image of the door or doors into your eyes in this more virtual kind of way but for me i just, just skip that whole thing there's something up with mirrors man can't trust them don't want them staring at me or showing me things in my sleep i'd rather sleep in Mr. Wrinklestill, is that his name, Wrinklestill? Sleep in Mr. Wrinklestill's ratty little bed. Yeah, let him stare at me with his buggy bobblehead eyes bouncing around at me. Tip number four, remember, this all goes back to safety. Not just knowing that we're safe with our modern, rational, human prefrontal cortexes, our minds, but feeling you're safe in your body, in your unconscious conceptless, languageless, animal body. So the next tip, nothing hovering above you, no shelves or chandeliers or anything like that. Actually, at first I was going to put my futon bed thingy in the opposite direction that it is now. That's what I wanted, but there is this strange shelf that's built into the wall in my room. I've tried sleeping in that direction before and bang, bang, bang. Oh my God, so many times I've banged my head on that underside of that metal shelf. I don't even know what kind of shelf that is. Is it for a TV or something? Is it a Japanese thing? What's going on? I don't even know. And I don't want no nasty TV if that's what it's for. I don't even know what it's there for. A big metal plate just jutting out of the wall, drilled into the wall, can't even move it. I guess it's always good to have extra space, even if it's a metal weird floor platform thing up there in the sky, just chilling there. Doesn't really look like it belongs. Anyway, you can put things on it, and I put things on there, like, you know, papers and things like that. But but it hurts when I spring up out of bed, getting my day off to a real bang and start. I should take responsibility for that. I probably shouldn't be sleeping under metal platforms. But I'm human, and I just I thought it's a good idea somehow. Even if it's not possible for you to actually bang your head on the shelf or whatever thing you got up there, your body feels like it will or it can, so get out from under there. Plus, it might fall down on top of you or your little nutcrackers or crystals or bowling balls or whatever stuff you got displayed up there, played all beautifully up there, might... Dun, 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 come jumping off the cliff or rolling down the hill and belly flopping into your body or head the two of you colliding cracking heads together 
That's no fun. No bueno. Don't let little trinkets and goblins and diving boards and cliffs and crackling, crunching tree branches hover up above you. Keep it clear up there. So now I feel much better. My feet are a bit under that shelf thingy, which I guess still isn't ideal, but better my feet than my head. Protect that big old dome of yours. No need to sleep with a helmet on, but don't let skaters and snowboarders and people ollie over your head and your sleep. You know, having asteroids just lingering up there, waiting to drop. Tip number five, nothing dangerous or hard or sharp or scary under the bed. Yeah, I know your bed's not going to just collapse. That salesman of the year trophy isn't going to impale you in the middle of the night. By the way, congratulations. You are a really good salesman. I thought that was really awesome. You know, everyone knows about you. Even over here in Japan, the word's been getting around. We're like, whoa, I want to go to America and meet that salesman of the year. Yeah, man, he's awesome. I want to become like that too. Wouldn't that be so cool if I can be like the best salesman? Oh, crap, man. That's the life. Living the life. But you don't want that thing. You don't want that dumb trophy thingy, the Washington Monument crashing through your abdomen, you know, while you're just trying to sleep. But it's probably not actually going to impale you. And your Tonka trucks, I saw them. We know they're there. There's no hiding them. And no shit. No, don't be ashamed. It's cool. We all, we all got our things. Your Tonka trucks aren't going to crash into your back. They're protected. They're under the bed. So what do you got to worry about? Well, remember, you're an animal and animals don't think. They feel and perceive. That dummy, dummy mammal inside of you needs to feel safe, especially when it sleeps, when it knocks most of its cameras, sensors, motors, and everything offline, shutting it all down, putting itself on sleep, aka vulnerability, easy prey mode. No ouchy things underneath you, underneath your bed. Don't turn your bed into one of those Vietnamese booby traps out there in the forest for you to step on and fall through, all soft on the surface and spiky down below, a uh, snake pit slithering down there, just waiting to attack. I don't gotta worry about all of this. My bed is just a big, thick blanket, basically. <laughs> I could feel a marble or gerbil under there. God, I would hate to find a gerbil under there. That's the scariest thing. I'd give me a ghost, not a gerbil. If you want to put things under your bed, put things like stuffed animals and pillows and flowers and clouds and soft things like that under there. Only safe, soft things. So also no horror movie DVDs or Metallica CDs, no Halloween costumes, However soft they might be, they probably are soft. Why would you have a hard Halloween costume? What, what is that? A hard Halloween costume? What, what would that even be? Or pictures of or letters from your ex. When it comes to sleep, heaven must be all around you, up above, down below, and everywhere in between. Tip number six, keep any negative or exciting or fiery action-based wake-promoting things out of your room far, far away from your bed and your head. The Chinese would call this fire energy. I think a lot of us would call that fire energy. Things like electronics or anything that's going to increase your cortisol or dopamine or get you into outward facing action mode. Unplug or just completely kick these electronics and scary, exciting things out of the room. I live in one single space, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, all smashed together into one. Not ideal, but I'm working on my life. If you're living in the West, like especially in America, your house is probably way more than one room. So this should be easier for you. Keep the low energy, calming, airy, watery things in your bedroom, your sleep space, and put everything else, the TVs and any electronics, exciting pictures, posters of rock bands or girls in bikinis out of there put it in your living room or something you could take down your pamela andersons if they're hanging in your living room i don't know why you're gonna put them there you can just put them in the closet or toss them out you can hide them whenever your grandparents come over of course you don't want them saying that but don't let her or her friends entice you in your sleep hanging there on your wall how 
are you supposed to sleep with those big old bitties on the wall smashed into your eyeballs? Probably going to lead to some pretty cool dreams. But still, sleep is for resting and shutting down and not doing anything. Not for getting all randy and pumped up and running around. Your bedroom is a sleep shrine surrounded by nothing but soft, gentle water and gods. Super calm and relaxed. Volume down low. Make your bedroom a sleep sanctuary, a peaceful oasis, a Jesus-approved land of clouds and angels and dolphins and doves and, yeah, all that good stuff. Yeah, hell yeah. I want that kind of bedroom. That's my kind of place. Don't you want that too? Tip number seven, don't sleep with your feet to the door. In feng shui, they call that the coffin position or the dead man's position because that's how they carry the corpse laying in the coffin out of the house, feet first, just rolling it out there, carrying it. Oh, wow, that's dark stuff. Man, I didn't even realize it, but I was sleeping in a coffin for nearly the past year. No wonder I couldn't sleep as well as I wanted to. I was sleeping in the Death Star in a cemetery. My body thought it was a corpse, like it was dying or already dead. Dark, scary energy pulsating through that room, through my body, through my feet, through my head. Oh, man. I'm so glad I'm not dead. You don't want to sleep in a coffin. Terrible. And doesn't feel good. And plus, at the same time, I had the window and all the noises behind me going on back there too. A corpse getting pushed out of the house while still getting mauled and pummeled by monsters from behind. And then waking up, banging my head in the shelf that doesn't belong anywhere. So don't sleep with your head to the door. You want to be able to catch anything trying to sneak in and don't sleep with your feet to the door you're not dracula you're not dead yet so i guess that leaves you with two options door to your left or door to your right or i guess you could put your bed in some tricky dippy diagonal position this brings me to tip number eight and this comes from vats can't even say this vastu shastra which is an ancient traditional indian architecture system It tells people how to place things. In this Indian philosophy, buildings are believed to be living organisms, living things, and they should be placed, and everything should be placed in harmony with the universe. Everything is connected in one big system of energy. Nothing is isolated. Nothing is impervious to that larger electromagnetic field. And so the same holds true for your body everyone's bodies, and your room. Earth's magnetic field is strongest at the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, Santa Land and Penguin Land, and it's weakest at the equator. What does this have anything to do with sleep and your bed position? Well, according to Vastu Shastra, the human body also being electromagnetic has its own North and South Poles. Your head is your North Pole and your feet your South Pole. This isn't exactly science, I don't think, but maybe those ancient Indians were right, and what they say feels right to me. So for sleep, according to Vastu Vastu Shastra, you want your North Pole, your head, pointed south, and your South Pole, your feet, pointed north. That's assuming you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, like deep in Africa, South America, or Australia, It'll be the opposite. Head pointed north, feet pointed south. Having your head compass and the earth compass pointing in the same direction is just too much. An electromagnetic overload or something. Not good for sleep. I'm still trying to wrap my head around around the supposed science of this stuff. I don't really understand it yet. Just started learning about it a few days ago after moving my bed and wondering why my sleep suddenly became so lush and beautiful and magical. We'll figure out all that logic and science later. But the takeaway message and the experiment is this. The best way to sleep is with your head pointed south and your feet pointed north. That is assuming you're living in the US, Europe, East Asia, in the northern hemisphere. Then the second best position, which is what I'm doing, would be head pointed east, feet pointed west and then if you're in the southern hemisphere just 
reverse it. Sleep with your head in the north, feet in the south, or head in the west, feet in the east. These Indian guru guys must be geniuses. I can't figure out what they're talking about, but get this. In that monster-filled cave that I was sleeping in, in my Dracula coffin, in my graveyard, my head was pointed north. Oh no, things just got worse. That must have pulled me into some turbulent, electromagnetic, not-so-colorful whirlwind. Probably black and white whirlwind. (laughs) I don't know what it looks like. Ask those Indian guys freaking charge up and explode the brain batteries why don't you despite getting morning sunlight and stopping the caffeine and all that good stuff i wasn't sleeping that well and then i just flipped my bed 90 degrees now my feet are in the west and my head is in the east and i'm sleeping like a baby floating in a calm ocean full of dreams the magnetic poles are now apparently lined up just right they are knocking me out offline and i'm loving it Oh, and the reason I chose the east-west direction instead of the south-north one is because that's the only way I was able to win the game of Tetris in this little complicated room. The puzzle pieces just didn't fit, and that's the best solution that I came up with. This room is too small, and plus, I don't want to sleep with my back to the door. That would have looked and felt super strange, and plus, as we've talked about, it puts the body in a state of alarm and danger with the enemies at your back at the entryway so i thought this was really interesting and wanted to share it with you just in case you hadn't heard about it before maybe it's common sense i don't know i do literally kind of live in a cave not watching tv or consuming news or consuming a lot of the normal things that normal people do and even if you have heard of it this is a good reminder and play around with different bed positions see what feels right Vastu Shastra, or Feng Shui aside, whatever feels right and works for you, do that. Whatever feels right is right. Spin that bed around this way or that and find the spot, the magic sweet spot for you. Okay, we're almost done. Just a couple more tips. Hot stock tips. No, none of that. Bed tips. Yeah, even better. Tipping you into the land of sleepy, sleepy, sleep. Tippy tippy tip number nine, get a headboard or sleep with your head against the wall with a wall behind you. It'll make you feel safer. It's much better to have a rock solid, impenetrable cave wall behind you than the open, violent wilderness. The modern day version would be the window or the door. Now I'm away from that window, safe. Behind me now is a nice, safe, solid wall. Put your head up against the wall too. Try it out. Feet also, if you can. Or get a headboard. But not those ones with metal vertical bars like you're some kind of prisoner. What's up with that? Who wants to feel like they're sleeping in a prison cell in a zoo cage? I don't think anyone wants that. Who designed that junk? Get a real solid headboard. It'll protect you from all the bad guys. And if not, the wall can be your protector and friend. I feel a thousand or ten thousand percent better with that guy standing guard behind me. Man, he's muscly too. He's a freaking brick house. The last tip for today, number 10. Position your bed, sleep in a way that mimics the way you slept as a child. I mean, when you slept most safely and soundly and comfortably and happily as a child. For me, a big part of that was sleeping on the floor. I would sleep on my parents' floor sometimes. That was the best. I think subconsciously now, I even imagine that this big desk to the left of me, next to me, with its four tall legs, is my parents' bed. My dad and mom are up there watching over and protecting and loving me. Or, as a kid, I would sleep on the living room floor. There was my brothers, just for fun. Or friends would invite me over to their house and we would have sleepovers. If as a family we ever got a hotel room, which I think only happened once or twice, I was always sleeping on the floor. Because, you know, there just wasn't enough space for everyone on the bed. There are 10 of us, 12 of us, I guess, because 10 kids and two parents. And I was comfortable on the floor. I am still comfortable on the floor. Sometimes my brothers and I would sleep in the backyard 
set up the tent and sleep in there. Ah, that smell of morning mist mixed with tent fabric and having to collapse everything apart before the sprinklers turned on. And of course, all the times camping and Boy Scouts, which my mom forced me to go to, which now I'm glad because those were good times. I love those camping trips. I could go on and on about more floor sleep stories, but basic point, I feel comfortable sleeping on the floor, on the ground. So futons are perfect for me. And I'm sure there are other ways I can even further recreate my childhood room and childhood sleeping situations, get some cartoon character sheets and pillows cases and things like that, maybe some fluffy little dolls and an extra bed perhaps, or a bunk bed even better. Imagine my brother up there sleeping safely and peacefully, us together, best buddies in both waking life and the land of dreams and sleep. How did you sleep as a child? What are your best and most comfortable and happiest memories about going to sleep? You can do it now. Do it again. Do it forever. When it comes to sleep, you never have to grow up. You don't have to do anything. There are no rules. The bedroom is a free, timeless, Peter Pan fantasy world. Be a child there. Even better, be a baby. Maybe buy a pair of fake titties and suck on them in your sleep or baby bottle, whatever. Suck on your baby bottle. Put some hot milk in there and wow, 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 go to sleep. Or even better, fall in love and suck on those soft, milky, real human breasts of your girlfriend, lover, bedtime buddy, or wife. And maybe you're a woman. You can still suck on those titties if you want. Everybody loves titties. That's why they're called titties. Boobs, just the word alone. That'll calm you down and put you to sleep. Boobs. Dude, I can't even finish this podcast. Stop it, man. Goo goo gaga. Baby hungry. Baby want a nap. Hold me tight and tuck me into your feminine delight. Your foggy feminine magic. Sweet, sweet feminine magic. How are we supposed to live without a mother, even when we're all big and grown up? Maybe it's part of why we all crave love and relationships. I'm not talking about all that Freudian stuff. We need someone to be there with us in our daytime adventures and sometimes also cradling us in his or her arms as we sleep. And yes, we need a father too. How freaking magical is it that real life mommies and daddies exist? We get to be with them, share a life together, have real experiences, at least for some period of time. Yeah, they die. But she was there. He was there. He's still there. We were real. We were together. And brothers and sisters, friends, and even enemies too. It's so wonderful. Invite some of those cuddly characters into your room and together hop onto that boat and float down the sleepy sea to the land of Hanali. This is your bedroom. Things like reality and normalness and society and all that mumbo jumbo don't matter here. They do not exist. This is a land of fantasy and dreams and complete freedom and escape. Your oasis, your heaven, your safe little home, your boat floating wherever you want it to go. Flip everything around in whatever way feels best. Listen to your body. Make it a safe, inviting place for your inner baby, animal, and child. Don't listen to your rational brain or even your eyes. Listen to your heart, your body, and your feelings. If you're not sleeping very well, if you've already tried everything and are not sure what else to do, maybe you can try out some of the tips that I've shared today. But at the end of the day, they're just tips, guidelines, signposts, ideas, experiments you can test out. They may or may not work for you, but my hope is that today's episode at least woke you up a bit and reminded you that your bed is not stuck, nailed to the ground in its current position. You can move it, try out different configurations, see what feels most cozy, and your bedroom doesn't have to be the way it is. You can completely flip things around You can flip your whole life around. The past does not need to be the future. Today marks a new, fresh start for your bed and the way you sleep.